Hey, Mike old X-Force PC. So we rarely get computers back. Uh, most of the time, you know, if a customer has a problem with a computer, we try to resolve it uh, over the phone with a part swap or whatever. But it, very rarely, I'd say once every six weeks, we get a computer back here. So I thought, hey, we're getting a computer back today. Why don't I take you on the journey to uh, figuring out what is wrong with it? So that's what you're gonna see here. If you, the customer, end up watching this video, don't think take anything I say personally um, about your handiwork or whatever. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Just received a computer back from a customer who's bought a bunch of computers from us, but says this one would not turn on. And... Um, we had them try to reseat the RAM. It's taped with this strapping tape, which is very difficult to open. Jeez. Um, and we had them reseat the graphics card. They said it still wouldn't uh, come on. I think it, it would like come on for a second and then turn off again is what it was doing. Now, supposedly, this customer, I was told through a third party, had some sort of level of knowledge or, I hesitate to use the word expertise, but knew something about computers, let's put it that way, and claims that his belief was that it was the processor or the uh, motherboard. And the reason I know he must not have that Oof, much expertise is processors rarely, rarely go bad. I've built probably 5,000 computers and I've had two processors go bad in 5,000 machines. And one was in the first couple of minutes. Like it, it only lasted five minutes and the thing died on me while I was building the machine. And then another one, I think it was hit by lightning. So processors have a lot of fail safes built in to prevent such failures. Now the reason you're sitting through all this uh, is if this thing turns on, I wanna show that I uh, unboxed it, you know, live that I didn't just fix it. So I don't wanna like cut away. Now notice right off, there's a nice little note inside. Hopefully it's nice. Um, okay. So he has left me a note of all the things he tried and then shoved um, a lot of uh, material inside to try to hold everything. So, let's see what we have here. Nothing seems immediately amiss. So, we'll see what happens when we try to power it on. Eh, plug the network in, I guess. Okay, yeah, so just what he described, it powers on ever so slightly. Um, and the fans just move just a pinch and then it shuts off. So typically what that means is there is some sort of short involved. So now I'm gonna cut and we're gonna start going through this thing and figuring out what could be the problem. Okay, so we're back here looking at the system. The customer said he had done a few things like um, for some reason, he took the heat sink off to look at the thermal paste application. I'm not sure why, because that wouldn't really affect 
the computer turning on or not. But one thing I noticed is, you can't see it, it's down in here, but he didn't plug the, um, the, the case fan in the top back in, and he actually plugged the CPU fan into that header. So there's nothing plugged into the CPU fan uh, header on the motherboard for whatever reason. Um, I, I guess he just figured we'd find it and fix it. Also, the way he reinstalled the um, fan on here, um, it was highly likely this cable was going to get caught in this fan. So we'll change that back around. Um, so the question is, why does this thing turn on for a split second and then turn back off? I'm going to go ahead and take out the video card because you don't need, sorry if I'm getting in the way, but you don't need the video card in here for this. So might as well just take that out of here because it's also sort of in my way. All right, so let's take that out. They have another thing where they have this remote power switch that allows you to turn the computer on with a remote button. I don't think that's causing the problem, but um, we may just disconnect that to see. Um, the one thing I would like to find is the clear CMOS jumper, which without the manual might be difficult to locate. So let's pause and I'll locate that now. Okay, I just realized this board, this isn't very common, has a clear CMOS button on the back here. So I'm just gonna press that clear CMOS button and hold it in for a little while. Usually, you don't have to do it for more than a few seconds, but I'm gonna hold it in for 10 seconds. So what the Clear CMOS button does is it just resets all the BIO settings to default. Okay, I'm releasing that, and we are gonna plug the power back in as soon as I figure out where I slung the power to. Where did the, oh, I have a really short power cord here. So, I guess I'm just going to wheel this around. Now, I'm going to get a longer power cord. This is, this power cord's just, here we go. Here we go. Now, look at that. It just turned on. So, now the computer powered on. And all I did was hold down the clear CMOS button in the back of the computer. Now, it did turn back off, which is typical. Then they turn back on again. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the um, things back. Um, you know, get this fan on the correct direction and uh, get that plugged in. And then we'll come back. I'm not going to make you watch all that. Okay, we're back. I uh, put this fan, I turned it around the other way. I plugged the fans in correctly. I uh, put the video card back in, connected the power. Let's just see, um, turn the switch on in the back, see if we power on. And no, we don't. We powered on for a split second and then it turned back off again. So now that's interesting. We clear the CMOS, the computer turns on, we put the video card back in, and now the computer won't turn on. So, do we have a problem with the graphics card? Now, if I recall, let's see. I think the video card or cards are okay. As they can be powered up via the alternate power connections while not in the board. That's interesting. I don't know what that means. Um, so I'm starting to suspect a possible graphics card issue here. We cleared the CMOS with the video card out. It powered on. We put the video card back in. And now it won't power on. So what do we got here? Is this a, it's a 2070 Super? Um, exactly the same card I have here. So let's go for this again. OK. 
Okay, new graphics card installed. Now first I'm just going to try to turn it on with the new graphics card. I haven't let the power dissipate out of the power supply. I'm going to go ahead and do the clear CMOS deal. So I'm just going to hold that down for 10 seconds. So now, of course, we have a new, um, new graphics card in here. I have the switch on the power supply turned off. Okay. All right, so now we're powered back up. And let's see what happens. I'm ready with my keyboard. But I might want to plug a monitor in. And we have signal. Looky there. So, it looks like to me the graphics card failed in here. Um, the customer said he removed the graphics card and tried to turn the computer on, but the computer would not turn on. The computer would only turn on after I reset the CMOS or cleared the BIOS settings, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you notice here, there are some things I need to go back and fix. It reset our memory speed to 2133. I think this is running 3200 RAM, and uh, that's pretty easy to do. You just go into advanced mode, and you go to the OC tweaker, and go to DRAM configuration, load the XMP profile. Actually, we're running 3600 speed RAM. So, back out of here, and um, go back to advanced mode. Yeah, really the only thing I need to change is I need to update some of the fan curves in here. So I won't bore you all with that. I'll come back to the video if it turns out to be that there's something else wrong with this system. But um, I think we've pretty much figured it out. So uh, if you don't see any more after this, that was the problem. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is set up the fans again, the fan curves that we have set up for this system. And then I'm going to run it through a burn-in and uh, then send it back to the customer.